Hey fellas, how are you doing? So I got this patch here, which is uh, one that I made last year, I think I made a tutorial about it. For the original tutorial you can find the link in the description, but basically it's pretty straightforward. We got uh, a GGL BFG object with a texture, a text noise texture of course, uh, that is red, so the texture is red by a shader which uses this texture to extrude a shape, simply a sphere shape from grid GGL grid shape, and you have a couple of parameters to choose, for example the frequency, of the um, texture we are reading, um, then you can change the color using also some color frequencies, red, green and blue, and then I also added a little uh, bloom just for the sake of it. So great, this was the original patch. The problem with this patch, and a couple of people already mentioned it to me, is that it doesn't work in GL3 of course, because the shader was written in GL2. So in this video we are going to transpose the shader which is very short, as you can see, into a GL3 shader, and this will be kind of also a layout uh, for when you want to transform GL2 shaders into GL3, right? So I am the moment working in Max GL2. I'm now going to change this in GL3. So preferences, GL3, and see you in a second. All right, so here we are. So if I start the patch, you can see that it just gives me a bunch of error, of course, because the shader doesn't work in GL3. So let's go into fix it. So I just will take my shader and open it in Visual Studio Code. So here I have my Visual Studio Code. Import my shader. There it is. I will go here where it says the language. I don't see it because there is my big face on top of it. Yeah, GLSL. Right. So uh, let's modify this baby. Right, we need a couple of things. Uh, we need a model view projection matrix. We need a model view matrix. Uh, we need a normal matrix. Uh, and we need uh, the projection matrix. So one difference between GL2 and GL3 is that in GL3 you need to pass inside the shader the matrices that are needed to transform this shape into projection space, right? They are not provided as, uh, um, as variables as they are here in GL2, you must provide them directly yourself in GL3, right? As an input, as a parameter, basically. So let's first change language to GLSL 1.5, which is the one used by GL3. And then let's input those, uh, those variables. So those matrices that are needed to transform the vertices position from uh, shape space, so object space, into uh, screen space, so projection space, right? So let's go for it. So param name, and uh, I've said we need the model view matrix. Uh, let's call it, uh, no, it's not a uniform, this is an attribute uh, of our object. So I will call it uh, model view matrix, mat, and this is of type mat4. Then we have to say state equal model view matrix. And if you don't know uh, where to get this information, so how this is actually called inside the shader, this matrix, well, you just have to go into help, reference of max, look for GLSL on the search, GLSL, then go into documentation, and there is here the GXS file format thing, right? So you have all the variables that you can provide a state, for example, the matrices here, and all the variables that you can provide a state variables, basically, and how you can declare them inside the shader. It's all inside uh, the reference here in Max. Great. So we can see that we have a model view matrix, projection matrix, and so on. So as we said, we also need a projection matrix. So again, param name equal, uh, let's call it proj matrix is of type mat4 and of state uh, projection matrix. If I don't remember exactly how this was called, I will just go here, get the documentation and exactly, yeah, it's called projection matrix, so that's how I know about this stuff. Great. Uh, good, now we need to, now we need to bind them, so bind param model view mat program, we need to bind this to the vertex program because these are matrices that work on the vertices, they transform the position of the vertices, nothing to do with the fragment shader, alright? I should just notice that I call this matrix and the other I called it projection mat, so let's just 
model view mat, so let's just call it projection mat. Uh, great, let me just copy that, paste it, copy the name of our second matrix, paste it here, and uh, we need them to bind them also as uniform. So, so we need them to declare them inside the vertex shader as uniform. So uniform mat for model view mat. And if you don't know anything about matrices and what do they actually represent inside GLSL, I have an article on my website which I will link in the description. This kind of clarifies what are these different spaces in which uh, matrices are used inside GLSL. So uniform mat for, and uh, we say it's called projection mat. Great. Uh, let's see, probably we need something else, but uh, oh yeah, of course, we need also a texture matrix to transform and the texture coordinates to transform the incoming uh, noise texture uh, using this texture matrix. So again, I will go inside the, um, the reference here. I will check the texture matrix here. So texture matrix, right? Go here and uh, say, okay, we need another parameter. So param name. So let's call it texture zero mat. And this is also of type mat four state uh, we'll just paste that texture zero matrix so it says that you can have maximum uh, eight textures so from zero to seven so this is the first one so it's texture zero it's the only texture that we got so it's texture zero great then bind param texture zero mat program vp great uh, we need also the texture coordinates, so let's get them. Param name texture cord zero. Uh, no, that's actually actually our texture cord. So this is a vector too, because texture coordinates is this vector that contains the coordinates of where the texture must be applied on our vertices, right? So texture coordinates state uh, this is texture cord. How do I know that? Again, let's go in the reference thing. Well, it's actually not written here, but I believe this is how we can access them, the texture coordinates of our objects, so with texture code. Uh, let's give it a try. If it doesn't work, we know uh, it doesn't work. So bind param texture code program bp. Right. Uh, what have I done? Good. So here we need to set the texture matrix. So uniform mat4. Texture, zero, mat, something like that, you can call it as you want, but it's important that it has a name that you can remember is related to the first texture matrix that is needed to transform this texture. And then we need those texture codes, which actually is not a mat4, it's a vector2, texture coord, great. Uh, I think we are good to go. So texture coordinates. Now we need to uh, get our texture coordinates basically by transforming our texture coordinates by our texture zero mat, which is not an array. This is in GL2. It's an array. Now it's not an array anymore. It's just a uniform multiplied by our texture coordinates, which is a vector two. Now, since you cannot multiply a mat four by a vector two, we need to transform this vector two into a vector four. And we will do it just by adding a couple of components containing zeros. So, uh, this should be good. Now, instead of using texture 2D to read the noise texture, which is this texture here, uh, we just use the word texture. And texture coordinates multiply by the frequency. This is to have uh, the effect of the frequency. Again, for the how the actual algorithm works, you can refer to the original tutorial, right? This is just the adaptation to GL3 from GL2. So, great. Now, instead of the GL model view matrix, which is a built-in uniform in GL3, uh, we need to get the model view mat. Also, actually, GL vertex doesn't exist here. So, we need to get another attribute from this object, which is the position of the vertices. So, param name. Uh, vertex boss or something like that. This is a type, uh, I think it's a vector 4 actually, but actually no, I think it's a vector 3. So state, and this I think it's in the, um, the thing which is position, great. It's in the reference, it's called position, easy peasy. So let me copy that, boom, 
So uh, we called it vertex pause. Exactly. So this is the position of our vertices. Again, uh, it's exactly like in GL2, but instead of having those variables already inside the GLSL, in GL3 you had to provide them as inputs. It's just a layer of complication more. So uniform vector three vertex pause. We need to declare it. Then we can assign it here. Great. Oh, right. We need also the normal matrix and the normal. So we need to declare these as well. So let's go actually inside our reference. Let's see how the normal matrix is called. And it's called as you would imagine normal matrix. So here, let me copy that. Oh, and I forgot a closing tag here. Great. So normal mat. Mat4 normal state normal matrix so this comes from the oh, wrote it wrong normal matrix so this comes from the application we just have to get it as an input and then again uh, uh, we need the normals as well so let me copy that so this is the matrix needed to transform the normals now we need the actual normal so the position uh, actually the direction of the normals of every vertex so let's call it is normal the vertex normal makes more sense vertex normal state normal and these are actually the same buffers that we're using also in the transform feedback tutorials uh, we use the same buffers but in a completely different way but uh, you probably recognize uh, the name of the buffers if you follow the transform feedback tutorials as well so uh great let's bind a couple of things so we need to bind the normal matrix as we said and we need to buy the vertex normal which is of course is a vector 3 it's definitely a vector 3 so uniform vector 3 vertex normal and actually we need the uniform mat for a normal mat we called it right Good. So to get the normal matrix, we just need to multiply the normal mat by the GL normal. But uh, again, this is actually a vector f a mat four multiplied by a vector three, which is not legal. Also here, actually, is not legal for the vertex. So we need to actually to transform these uh, to a vector four. Let's just add the one as the last um, as the last number. Let's actually add the one also on the texture coordinates for some reason. I think this is important. And then we need to also create a vector no, uh, four with uh, written uh, nor, uh, vertex normal. So our vertex normal, and then we add a 1.0 here as well. To transform it into a vector four, we just add a fourth component to the vector three, all right? The normal normal is normal. This is, uh, is the same position I space, right? That's the position into I space. So the camera space. But again, for the original algorithm, I, will, I suggest you to check the, the previous video. And uh, right, GL position is actually a variable that we keep. Uh, we have to keep writing on also in GL3. GL front color doesn't exist anymore. This we need to change. So uh, GL projection matrix, this doesn't exist anymore. So this is just our projection mat that we imported. Great. Uh, GL front color doesn't exist anymore, so we need to create now an output variable that goes into our fragment shader. Now, in GL2, you would have wrote varying uh, blah blah blah, a varying variable, but in GL3, this is not possible. We have to create an um, output variable. So, out vector for color. Uh, let's uh, copy this line. Let's go into the fragment shader. So, before the main function, we just write instead of out, we write this as an input. So, that's how easy it is. So now we cannot just write GL frag color. This is something related to GL2. So we have to create an output variable from the ver from the, uh, the fragment shader. And let's call it like out color. And let's say simply out color. So what comes out from our fragment shader? So the final color of these pixels on the screen is equal to the color that we pass from the vertex shader. Uh, great. Let's see if this actually works. Doesn't seem to be working. So let's check. Oh, of course, we need to GL front color. We need to change it into color. Let's see if this now works. No, because okay, so now we got a couple of errors which we need to debug. Uh, out can be used with non varying color. This is an old error. Let me just resave the shader and see if we get the same error. 
yeah, error out can be used with non varying color. Okay, let's see what this actually means. Okay, I forgot surely something because I saw this in the next error, which was uh, global function texture requires version 130. Because now in GL3, we need to actually write which version of the shading programming language we are using. So we need to write here uh, this uh, hashtag uh, character. And then let's say version 330 core. And we have to write the same thing also on the fragment shape. It can be that this solves our errors, can be that it doesn't. Let's check this out. Good. Let's check max. All right. So let's see what uh, error we got. Okay, we solved the previous two errors. Uh, we got now implicit cast from vector four to vector two. All right. All right. Because text record is actually a vector two, so we simply need to say, don't get both the components. Get just the first x and y. Right. And the normal as well. Uh, here we have to say x, y, z, because we then we will dev, uh, otherwise we will get a uh, vector 4. So let's see if this works. Let me save. Oh, we get a big, big error. Ambiguous overloaded function, mat4, vector2. All right, silly me. Uh, silly me, because we actually need to enclose this whole thing into parentheses. And then say dot x y because otherwise we are just taking two components from this vector four, which totally nullifies uh, our what we wanted to do before. So and then we need to enclose also the normal thing inside parentheses. And uh, uh, right, so we got some errors. Let's see if actually just recreating the shape solves it. Okay, so as you can see, this took me quite some time. It almost got night here. So a couple of mistakes, stupid mistakes. First, syntax mistakes. I wrote parman instead of param and I also copied it a couple of times, so this mistake was uh, two times there. Great. Then, another mistake is that if we check the reference here, we can see that the normal matrix is actually a mat3, because normal matrix, uh, it doesn't work on the fourth component of the normals, it doesn't need it, because for reason related to um, how the transformation for the normal works. So we actually just need a mat3, so big mistake there, big mistake. So we have to say this is actually a uh, mat3. Then the biggest mistake of all was that I declared these variables that we get here from text core position and normal as uniforms, while they are actually not uniform, they are different for every vertex. While the matrices are all the same for all the vertices of the shape, uh, the position, the text code and the normal are different from uh, for every vertex of the shape. So actually they are not to be declared as uniform, but as an input. So this is an input attribute. It's called an attribute of the vertex. Exactly. So this will be in, in, in. Uh, and then of course, since this is a mat tree, we don't actually need to do all these... Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, for the normal, we don't need to do all these ramba zamba. We just need to... Multiply simply the normal by the normal matrix and we get a vector 3. Great, and this is now working. Right, so let's go in our patch. Modify a couple of parameters. Cool. Change the frequency here, the zoom of the function and so on. Right, uh, okay, so we managed. Took me quite some time off behind the screen to solve these bugs. Uh, and that's what happens when uh, you program basically, I suppose. So, yeah, this is it. That's a new shader. It's much longer than the original shader because we had to add all, uh, the, um, all the matrices for the transformation by end. But the result is exactly the same. And actually the syntax for the actual algorithm is exactly the same. Okay, great. Thank you for following the tutorial. Check the Patreon for patches to support the channel and if you want to get in contact with me. And see you soon in the next video. Oh, and uh, have a very good 2021. See you soon. Ciao.